What's up and welcome to the channel. We recently announced our CNC porting services for LT4 superchargers. Today, we're gonna to show you how to remove the supercharger, send it in for porting, and reinstall when it comes back. First thing you wanna do is remove the radiator exit duct. Next, we're gonna remove the air intake system. You can start by loosening the clamp at the throttle body, removing the PCV line, and disconnecting the electrical connector from the mass airflow sensor. Next, we're preparing to remove the coolant line. We clamp the cooling line with a plastic clamp just to prevent coolant from spilling everywhere. We remove the coolant line at the surge tank and at the radiator. This line uses quick release connectors at the radiator and surge tank side. With the coolant line out of the way, we can remove the bolts that hold the air box to the inner fender. Now the air box comes out as one piece. Now we're removing PCV lines at the right side valve cover and dry sump tank. Then move on to the PCV line at the left side valve cover. PCV lines can now come out of the way as one piece. Next, we're removing some retainers that hold the engine harness to the supercharger, and then we disconnect the coils. There's going to be four electrical connectors that need to be removed here. The throttle body connector, the canister purge solenoid connector, a harness connector that leads to the active fuel management and a coolant temperature sensor, and a MAP sensor. You also need to remove the vacuum line that goes to the brake booster, which is the big connector at the top of the throttle body. and the vacuum line that goes to the canister purge solenoid, which we already removed when we were removing the PCV lines. Once these four electrical connectors are disconnected, the coil harness and these connectors can be set off to the side. Moving on to the right side, remove the retainers that hold the engine harness to the supercharger. Disconnect the coils. 
the connector for the supercharger bypass valve controller. Then you can set the right side harness off to the side. Once again, we're using plastic clamps to clamp off these intercooler lines to prevent coolant from spilling. Remove the retaining clip that holds the connector for the coolant line to the coolant manifold. We like to cap the coolant manifold here to prevent coolant from spilling when removing the supercharger. Now you can set the coolant lines off to the side. Next, use a wrench to push the tensioner back and remove the supercharger belt. Next, we begin removing the supercharger lid by loosening all the retaining bolts. You can do this by hand, or to speed up the process, we use a small electric gun. With all the supercharger lid bolts loosened, we can remove the supercharger lid. Next, we remove the supercharger base bolts, starting with the most difficult bolt underneath the cowl. Don't forget to disconnect the second map sensor at the back of the supercharger. Next, remove the rest of the supercharger base bolts. You can do this by hand, or to speed up the process, we use a small electric gun. Now you can remove the supercharger assembly. Although we removed it with just one person here, it's recommended to use a partner when lifting the supercharger because it is quite heavy. Next, we wipe down the cylinder heads in preparation for taping the intake ports. Taping the cylinder head ports is important to prevent debris or bolts from falling into the combustion chamber. Now that the supercharger is off, we're going to show you a little bit of the porting process that will happen while your supercharger is at KTEC. Next, we're going to show you what to do once you receive your supercharger back from KTEC. With a helper, set the supercharger onto the cylinder heads. Make sure the supercharger is seated on the cylinder head before proceeding. Note that on this vehicle, we already 
installed the throttle body before we set the supercharger up. Next, we're loosely installing the bolts on the supercharger base. Don't forget to thread in the supercharger bolts that are under the cowl. Also, don't forget to plug in the map sensor at the back of the supercharger. Next, torque the supercharger base bolts to 89 inch pounds in the sequence shown. The torque wrench won't be able to reach the rear bolts, so you'll have to torque them by hand. Now we're reinstalling the supercharger lid. Start each of the bolts by hand. Then we run them in with an electric gun. Now torque the supercharger lid bolts to 89 inch pounds in the sequence shown. You can now install the supercharger belt. Once the belt is on, go over every pulley to make sure that it's seated correctly. You can now install the air intake system. On this particular car, we're using a Haltech air intake system. On this car, we're using a KTEC Billet 103 millimeter throttle body. So we're using a vibrant coupler designed to go with that throttle body. You can now bolt the air box to the inner fender. This engine has KTEC valve covers, so we set up our coil packs on the coil relocation kit. You have to install this connector on the valve cover before the valve cover goes on and after the supercharger. We've loomed our coil harness underneath the 
coil brackets, very tidy under here, connected all of our coils. Again, we've connected all of our electrical connectors, throttle body, MAP sensor, the AFM and coolant connector here, and the canister purge solenoid. We've connected the vacuum line for the canister purge solenoid, as well as the large vacuum line that leads to the brake booster. We've connected the PCV line that goes to the air intake underneath the air intake system here and to the dry sump tank. The KTEC valve covers have a PCV line connection at the back on the right side valve cover that leads to the dry sump tank. When using the Haltech air intake system, we need to relocate the coolant bleed line so it still connects to the radiator. It routes around the Haltech system here, connects to the thermostat housing at the engine, routes around the Haltech system and to the surge tank. You want to make sure to retain that line to the Haltech system somehow so it doesn't rub on the alternator pulley. Don't forget the electrical connector at the supercharger bypass valve and the mass airflow sensor. We've connected our intercooler lines and filled the cooling system and finally reinstalled the radiator exit duct. Thanks for watching. We're ready to port your supercharger. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.